shadows amid snowstorms. That was pretty interesting and there's quite a bit I want to talk about regarding the lore. So the first thing they show us is the giant wolf, the golden wolf lord, which is pretty interesting because Zack said that it's an enemy from another world, not from the abyss. Now this could be a mistake, but we do know from the archive that the rift hounds were created by gold. It's mentioned in the in the archives itself. It was also mentioned that they were prevalent during the cataclysm, but they have dwindled in numbers following hunts and resistance. So I'm guessing he actually meant to say that it's from the abyss or maybe the abyss is another world. Maybe the abyss isn't even considered to be part of Teyvat and is like a different world. I am not entirely sure what he meant by this as another world. Maybe it's just a mistake. Maybe he's referring to the abyss itself. Or maybe gold used essence from this golden wolf lord in order to create the Rift Hounds today. Meaning maybe gold was also a traveler of worlds and maybe he found the golden wolf lord from another world. Something to think about. Anyway, what we see next is Arataki Ito and it seems like his story is going to be revolving around the reputation of the Oni, which we know was destroyed 500 years ago when Chiyo betrayed the Shogunate. So when Chiyo was corrupted and attacked the Raiden Shogun, people didn't really know that she was corrupted and people just thought that the Oni have this tendency to betray their friends or their master, which is why the reputation got dragged into the mud. This also happened to Chiyo's sons and entire clan, the Mikoshi clan. But the day that reputation should be somewhat alleviated because the Mikoshi clan have already settled their debts and proved their honor once again. But of course, lingering resentment could be the main topic of this story quest. Similar to how Eula, despite their clan's mistake over a hundred years old, the resentment towards their clan still continues until today. That's the same thing probably with Arataki Ito and the Oni. The people of Inazuma still view them as this dishonorable clan with the tendency to betray themselves despite the Mikoshi clan still high stature in the Narukami. Although I don't think Arataki Ito being in a gang of all things helps in the reputation of the Oni. But it looks like that Ito has his own reputation and he likes to be a sort of peacekeeper which is probably what we're gonna be doing here. Looks like whoever's the villain of this uh, storyline has gotten hold of a charm similar to the Labyrinth Warrior's charm and was able to create their own domain which we will probably help Ito take down. But I do hope we do learn a little more about the displaced Oni and how they have fared over the last 500 years. Especially since we know that Chiyo's sons have worked really hard in maintaining their reputation. Because the Oni were also the ones who created the Iwakura blade art, which we kinda ended their bloodline by killing all the students as well as the master of the Iwakura art. So, um, yeah, the Traveler is kinda also responsible for killing a lot of the Onis, kind of. <laughs> Up next, it looks like we're coming back into Dragonspine in order to help with some training for the Adventurers Guild. Uh, some sort of northern cold training, which is kind of weird, but it looks like maybe the Knights of Avonius volunteer in order to help new adventurers. This is probably why we see Bennett in the trailer and the story, also Amber and Eula. What's more interesting though, it looks like someone's been ransacking Albedo's alchemy stuff. And... Based on the trailer, I think it's Albedo himself. He might have been doing things subconsciously that he doesn't remember now, which is kind of bad because of what he mentioned from the last Dragon Spine storyline. So maybe he's starting to lose himself a little bit. At least that's what I think. It might be another third party person, maybe it's the treasure hoarders, but I think Albedo is starting to kind of lose himself and he's been ransacking his own stuff, maybe desperately trying to find some sort of uh, cure or whatever he thinks is going on with his body and mind. And then suddenly in the trailer, he turns on us. 
And not only that, but he turns on us using some sort of ice power. But it looks like ice power, but it could also be the art of Kemia because, you know, art of Kemia is basically alchemy. It can be pretty much anything, which also begs the question on how powerful Kanria was when they had the Art of Kemia mastered because they could basically, maybe if I'm right that Albedo is using the Art of Kemia to produce this ice, then maybe the Kanrians before could use all sorts of magic and maybe even all sorts of elements. An eighth element maybe? And it's not even a little bit. Just from the trailer, we see that he can dish out a lot of elemental power using this either art of Kemia or ice powers. Maybe he's the new Fatui Harbinger. Maybe he got Senora's delusion and now can use Senora's ice powers. Just kidding, just kidding. It's also a testament to how powerful the Knights of Avonius actually are in lore, which I did cover in a previous video. Very interesting to see Albedo gonna fight us. Maybe a new world boss. Well, probably not a world boss, but probably a... A boss fight maybe like the fight with a i'm also very happy that amber and bennett are finally getting more screen time and getting into stories and seeing bennett actually fight in the story is pretty pretty cool i cannot wait for this story i hope they add more lore bits into the story as well as we learn more about albedo himself you also have to remember albedo is one of the people that can actually tell us about conria and maybe even rind the tear can we learn a little bit more about that? Also, Alice, we can potentially learn more about the lore from Albedo. Almost the same as the Archons. Hopefully, hopefully we get to learn more about that. But I'm not really that confident. In any case, there's also one more event that I want to talk about. And that's the Energy Amplifier event. Now, the event itself is just a rerun, supposedly. But I think we're going to get a continuation of the story itself or the the lore behind the energy amplifier by the Sumerian scholar. This means that we will learn a little bit more about the Ermon soul trees which are getting a bit more limelight these days as a very important uh, tree. But yeah, it's important because they take root directly into the abyss and they are supposedly uh, fonts of power through the ley lines. They're like uh, points of interest for the ley lines. So it would be nice to learn more about the Ermin soul trees from this Sumerian scholar aside from just it being a rerun which we could potentially could potentially just be a rerun but if it's a continuation of the previous storyline that would be cool as well and maybe we can even learn a little bit about the Hexen Zirkel who are this coven of witches who are uh, studying the ermine soul trees and granting them insane capabilities. Alice is one of the characters in this Hexen Zirkel that we know that's near omnipotent. Could it be that they're get getting their strength from the ermine soul trees itself? But yeah, there could be a lot of lore potential in the next patch. Let's hope that Mihoyo leaves a little bit of breadcrumbs for us to pick up. But let me know your thoughts. What do you think about 2.3 lore wise and maybe even gameplay wise? Do you think that we're going to get a little bit of lore context in this story? Or is it all going to be filler still and got nothing to do with the overall story? I know for a fact that Albedo's storyline is definitely going to have some lore in it, especially about the art of Kemia. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.